great white shark nearly devoured documentary filmmaker and underwater photographer Henry Borse while he was filming. He was recording a documentary when the footage was taken in 1964. However, he only managed to escape with a damaged leg. He contributed to the shark documentary Savage Shadow, which recreated the episode in the year 1968. He continued to dive while recording sharks and other marine life. The swimmer had no idea that a short while later, he would die in a similar scenario in Australia. Henry spent his final minutes crying for aid and fighting off a gigantic 14-foot great white shark before being eaten alive in front of other terrified swimmers. He'd been swimming off Little Bay Beach in the afternoon when his life was tragically cut short in Sydney's first deadly shark attack in 60 years. Beginning Borse, a Dutch-Australian scuba diver, was born in Rotterdam in March 1934 and moved to Australia as a youngster in 1954. He worked as an underwater videographer, musician, and shark attack survivor. He is best known for his film Savage Shadows, which depicted a great white shark removing his left leg. He trained as a graphic artist and learned to utilize an aqua lung with his father. Borse was the leader of the Henry Borse All-Stars and a saxophone. He was also a member of the Thunderbirds in 196062, The Planets, and Johnny Donahue Quartet. Henry's first attack on the day of his first shark attack. The Victorian Aqualung Club had roughly 40 divers on board. Around 12.30 p.m., Borse dove into the water, shot a roll of film, and then swam back to the boat. He got back in the water at 13.30 and was free, diving and taking pictures of a bull seal with two other divers, Dietmar Krupa and Fred Arndt, who were all carrying ceremonial spears. The seals disappeared completely. The sea was very empty, Borse remarked. Our instincts as divers alerted us to the danger during a brief period of unsettling silence. They dove 10 meters down, keeping their distance from the bottom. When the divers couldn't find the seals, they climbed. It broke the surface and slammed into Borse's head with great force. I threw my arm up in the diver's signal for help and screamed. I was torn through the water with enormous power and dragged below. The force of the attack ripped my mask and snorkel. I could see only a blurred shape, a huge shadow, as the shark took me to the bottom, gripping my leg. As it dived deep, the shark shook me the way a dog would shake an old slipper. I found myself reaching for the shark's eyes but I could barely reach my arm around his gigantic snout, and I just scrabbled helplessly across the monster's muzzle. There was another sensation in which pain and fear were almost forgotten. I was drowning. I needed air, suffocating as I was tugged and rolled from side to side. Then suddenly it all stopped. The shaking and the turmoil ceased. There was a moment almost of peace. Then I realized as I groped for the surface that I had just had my leg bitten off. The air was wonderful as I gasped on the surface. Then I fell down to the remains of my left leg. I was quite calm, shocked perhaps, but I found it hard to focus clearly. There was a curious division in which my body tended towards natural animal panic, but my mind remained quite detached. Dietmar Krupa and Fred Arndt eventually reached Boers after diving in. The two swimmers drove the shark away with their light hand spears at least five times. The spears were bent and twisted from hitting the shark, yet the creature showed no aggression towards either of the two men. The diving boat drove toward the men in the sea, pulling its anchor. Jill Ratcliffe, Boar's girlfriend, grabbed the safety line, dived into the sea and swam to the men, followed by other divers. Boar's was hauled into the dive boat and transported to the center of the deck where a tourniquet was quickly performed. People were still on the island. Therefore, it was decided to head for port and return later to them. Captain Kelly issued a mayday informing them of Boers' blood type and requesting a doctor and ambulance to meet them in Port Ferry with blood for transfusions. A doctor and an ambulance greeted the boat at the Port Ferry dock. Boers had lost three five liters of blood and was given transfusions while being taken to Warren Amble Hospital. A 2.4 meter long white shark was involved in the event. The shark removed Boers' leg but did not swallow it since Krupa noticed it floating in the water. On the beach and in the boat, Boers was petting a dog. 
and Krupa speculated that the fragrance of the dog on boars may have drawn the shark to him. How frequently do shark attacks occur in Australia? More than 16 zero miles of Australia's coastline are covered in water, and about 170 of the 400 shark species are found there. In 2020, Australia reported 22 unprovoked shark attacks, accounting for 38% of the global total. Eight were fatal, accounting for half of all fatal sharks attacked globally in 2020. Every year, 77 shark attacks occur worldwide, with the United States usually reporting the largest number. In 2020, Florida was responsible for 48% of all shark attacks in the United States. The Florida Museum of Natural History investigated 137 suspected shark attacks worldwide in 2021. The United States reported 47 attacks, one of which proved fatal when a surfer was killed, presumably by a great white whale on Christmas Eve off the central coast of California, according to police. With a total of 28, Florida recorded more than half of all attacks in the United States in 2021. In Australia in 2021, there were 12 recorded shark attacks, three of which were deadly. Paul Milichip, 57, was thought to be the last person murdered in an Australian shark attack in 2021 until today, when he was taken by a shark while swimming at a beach in North Fremantle, Perth in November an attack seen by numerous people. Boars was attacked by a 2.4 meter long great white shark off the coast of Australia's Lady Julia Percy Island in November 1964, which proved his final attack. He was 29 years old and lived in Hawthorne East at the time. He lost his left leg in the attack but survived and chronicled the event in his 1,969 documentary, Savage Shadows. He kept diving while wearing a customized diving fin on his left leg's thumb. He filmed a short film for BHP and SO called Reef of Steel in the 1,970s and appeared in Island Treasure in 1,981. He was interviewed about his shark attack, including by Peter Luck in 1,979. The beach was filled with dozens of swimmers, paddle boaters, and rock fishermen at the time, and was regarded by locals as one of the best-kept secrets in Sydney's East. They were informed of the danger by the swimmers' ear-splitting screams, but could do nothing but look on in astonishment as the monstrous shark cut the swimmer into two and devoured chunks of his body. The predator was seen thrashing around in the ocean and dragging its victim below as the sea became red with blood causing alarm on the shore. The circumstances were harrowing for emergency personnel and lifeguards deployed in boats, rescue helicopters and jet skis during the frantic hunt for the swimmer. When human remains were discovered an hour later, a police officer notified colleagues over a scanner. Footage definitely shows a person, half a body being grabbed by a shark. A fisherman can be heard saying someone just got eaten by a shark in the video. The swimmer's injuries were so severe that paramedics could not save him. As they returned to shore, hundreds of fishermen and beachgoers were still reeling from the fatal occurrence. The disaster occurred at Bucking Point, the famous area for rock fishing and spear fishing between the beaches of Little Bay and Mullabar. A shark just devoured someone. Oh guy, oh no, this is completely ridiculous. That's a great white shark, one fisherman yells in the video. The swimmer's remains were discovered in the sea shortly after the heinous crime, according to New South Wales police. Wetsuit pieces were also recovered. The swimmer's injuries were so severe that paramedics could not save him. As they returned to shore, hundreds of fishermen and beachgoers were still reeling from the fatal occurrence. The disaster occurred at Bucking Point a famous area for rock fishing and spear fishing between the beaches of Little Bay and Mullabar. The tragic attack came after warnings that shark attacks are on the rise. In Australia, there were 82 recorded shark attacks in the 1990s, which increased to 161 in the following decade. There were 220 fatal attacks reported in Australia between 2010 and 2020, 
with three fatal attacks reported in 2021. How does it make you feel seeing how Henry was ruthlessly devoured by some sharks he spent his life documenting about? Let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching till the end. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell for more videos like this. Goodbye.